Any moment now, President Biden and Ukrainian President Zelensky will emerge from a closed-door meeting at the White House and hold a joint press conference to address the need for an aid package for Ukraine. This morning, President Zelensky was on Capitol Hill, where he made the case to lawmakers that time is of the essence when it comes to securing additional funding from the United States for his country. He warned that without the aid, the war could turn far more brutal at the hands of Russian forces. Republican lawmakers, however, seem unmoved in their resistance to passing more aid with without tying it to U.S. immigration policy. The House Speaker Mike Johnson doubled down on his party's stance following his own meeting with Zelensky. Just today, in an effort to show that the aid has dealt a serious blow to Vladimir Putin, the Biden administration declassified new intelligence showing that the Russian military has faced a staggering 315,000 troops that have been killed or wounded since the war began. Joining us now is the member of the House Armed Services Committee, Democratic Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill of New Jersey. Congressman, great to see you. I, I'm sorry ahead of time if I have to uh, interrupt you because this press conference has started, but there's, there are very few people who are as well, well qualified to discuss this as you. You were a former pilot in the Navy. You've worked in Europe on yeah. matters uh, relating to Russia. And you understand the importance of this. This is not just about whether Ukraine suffers a bit if we don't get this funding done. It has sent shockwaves around the world that this might be a sign that America is backing down a bit from this fight, which will be a signal to a whole lot of other people that maybe they need to back down from this fight, too. You know, that's exactly right and something I'm critically concerned about. It's also a sign not just to our allies and our, our NATO allies, it's also a sign to those people who wish to do us harm. So we know that this is an alignment against not just the freedom of the Ukrainian people with the unprovoked Russian invasion, but also against U.S. interests. So we've seen Putin having Hamas come visit him to talk. We know he's using Iranian drones in southern Ukraine. Um, we know there is work being done on an oil gas pipeline to China. So all of these interests, people who don't have the best interests of the United States and our people at, at heart, are really lining up against us in this fight. That's why it's so critical. We continue this support. We stay strong with our allies in NATO to make sure that we don't give any ground in this fight for democracy and our values across the world. What do you, we have two issues. One is there's there's fatigue. There's always fatigue about these these wars. People lose a little bit of interest in the whole thing. They they kind of grind to a halt. And and, and then there's the issue of, of people just, you know, looking at other things and thinking about other things as priorities. How do you deal with that when this is a situation in which Russia just went into another country and Vladimir Putin is out there warning that why do you all think this would stop with Ukraine? Why, if you back down from this, do you not think that Russia might go for a neighboring country, even if one of those neighboring countries is a NATO country? Well, not just that, but why isn't China watching this and determining how long it's going to take in a fight if they want to take over Taiwan, for example, something we are desperately working to deter? So these are all of the things that are being calculated. But to your point about the fatigue, I think we maybe haven't conveyed to the American people well enough the success of the effort so far and what American support has been able to do in Ukraine. So we have kept the port of Odessa open for the Ukrainians. They have been able to ship out grain, grain that feeds large parts of the African continent, critical to the world food supply. We've ensured that they've been able to largely hold the Russians at bay, keeping Kyiv safe, the capital city, with our Patriot missiles. And we also have been working hard to re-up their industrial defense base, making sure that pretty soon, in some point in the future, they're going to be yeah. able to take <laughs> over their own munition supply. And we know how good that is because it was Ukraine that supplied large parts of the Soviet Union during the Cold War. So these are the things we're working on. These are the successes we are seeing. And nothing is stronger than the courage of the Ukrainian people and the ability of the Ukrainian people to utilize everything we've given them to continue to make sure that they are fighting strongly against the Russians. There's nothing wrong with wanting to deal with issues on the southern border. Um, how how do we have that conversation? That's been a decades-long issue uh, that, that has not seen a good resolution, and, and it ought to see a good resolution. Uh, how, how, do, how do you convince Republicans that this is existential for global safety? And, and the other one is serious and, and is also, to some degree, a national security issue, but should be separated out. 
Well, I think at this point it's becoming clear that I think some level of border security is going to be part of the supplemental. That is what we're negotiating on now. I'm very glad to see people are back at the table. Should we mix and match domestic policy with foreign policy? I would suggest no, but that is the point that we are at, and it's critical that we both make sure we're getting this supplemental done and also addressing some of our border security and immigration concerns. I would remind people that a lot of this supplemental will actually be going to our own U.S. defense manufacturing base, to U.S. jobs, U.S. companies um, here at home. Uh, things that we have been wanting to do since before Russia even invaded Ukraine, making sure we had a modern defense base here at home. And also, when we talk about comprehensive immigration reform, you're exactly right. We've seen a Republican president and a Republican Senate and a Republican House do nothing on this issue. We've seen a Democratic president and a Democratic Senate and a Democratic House not get anything done on this issue. We need to work together in a bipartisan way to make sure we're addressing our security at the border, to make sure we are providing pathways to citizenship and addressing immigration so we have high-skilled labor to fuel our innovation, so we have seasonal workers to help our rural farm areas. These are all things that I hear about from people across this country. Our immigration system is broken, and we really do need to all come to the table in a bipartisan way, because that's really the only way forward. I want to just play for my audience what uh, the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, said actually after meeting with uh, Volodymyr Zelensky. Let's listen to that together. We need a clear articulation of the strategy to allow Ukraine to win. And thus far, their responses have been insufficient. They have not provided us the clarity and the detail that we have requested over and over since literally 24 hours after I was handed the gavel as Speaker of the House. And so what the Biden administration seems to be asking for is billions of additional dollars with no appropriate oversight, no clear strategy to win, and, and none of the answers that I think the American people are owed. I have also made very clear from day one that our first condition on any national security supplemental spending package is about our own national security first. Okay, so that our own national security is, is, is the border stuff he's talking about. Take that away from that conversation. He's talking, and I, I ask you this as a, as a U.S. Navy veteran, he's asking for a clear articulation of the objectives and the strategy. Um, that doesn't sound unfair. However, if one looks at the last almost two years of this war, Whatever America's been doing has been pretty good. Uh, it, it brought NATO back to the table. It got everybody to up their spending in Europe. We're not spending as much as the other partners uh, in this war are in, in, uh, in helping Ukraine. So tell me what you believe he wants that would satisfy him in terms of a clear articulation of the strategy. Well, I, I would say that most people in the national security space, when we're talking about our own national security here at home, uh, what is critical to that is making sure that we are um, supporting our own defense manufacturing base, which this supplemental does, making sure that we are supporting democracy around the world against our enemies, such as Russia, um, such as Hamas, uh, which this supplemental would help to do. I, I think that he wants to have an articulation of why this support is working. And I have to tell you, if he doesn't have that, then he's just not listening. Because when we see, again, the ability, you know, Russia and Turkey backed off of their agreement to keep the port of Odessa open, and yet we and our NATO allies helped the Ukrainians keep that port open, keep the grain shipments going so that we, they could help feed the world and also support their own economy. Um, we have kept Russia at bay, a military that before this war started was considered the second best military in the world. And now I think many people say that they're only the second best military in Ukraine. Um, we've seen the fighters on the ground able to push back strongly against them, keep those, co those borders from shifting, keep Kyiv safe, keep the mainland safe, and the economic economic stronghold, the manufacturing stronghold in the East, free of the Russians so that they again can run their economy. These are the successes that America and our NATO allies have allowed for Ukraine. And beyond that, we are ensuring 
that Russia does not then expand its borders further into places like Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Poland, um, areas of Europe that are very worried about what Russia might turn to next should they somehow be successful in Ukraine. And the former uh, president of, of uh, Estonia is actually standing by after this conversation to talk to us about this because a whole lot of people say that seems... Um, you know, that, that, that seems to be an exaggeration. Um, Volodymyr Zelensky wants to be careful, right? He wants to be careful that he doesn't say we're going to lose this war if we don't have the money by the end of the year because he can't tell his people that. He can't go back home and say that. So how do you express to the world that this really, this thing has been fought sometimes with supplemental funding and, and things that Ukraine gets at the last minute and sort of asks the world for and the world considers for a long time? There could be a moment where Ukraine loses this war, and we have to take that seriously and understand what the consequences are if that happens. Well, I think just as importantly, we have to understand that Putin has an election coming up in March, and mm -hmm. he is very much going to want to declare some sort of victory here. And um, he congratulated the Republicans for blocking the supplemental so far. So obviously, he sees this as a big win. We see where his messaging is going. If the United States does not pass this, if we show weakness here, um, if our NATO allies follow our lead and show weakness here, he is going to take a big vip victory lap in March. And we know that Russian misinformation, um, if he can turn the, the full impact of his intelligence services to that misinformation, we know how damaging that could be, even to our elections here at home. So I think it's critically important that as a nation we stand behind democracy. We stand behind supporting our allies, behind our NATO allies, as we push further to make sure Ukrainians have what they need to fight. But also, and, and I can't emphasize this enough to people as the Americans are thinking about how their tax dollars are being spent, I can't emphasize enough how important and critical this supplemental is to our own U.S. defense base as we are looking at instability across the world, um, as we are looking at combating the Chinese influence in the South China Sea, the possible Chinese um, desire to overtake Taiwan, um, the deterrence we want there. This is so critical to our own defense manufacturing base here at home.